This is an, a, another Bills defender getting I think injured. it might be DeMar Hamlin. Now the Bengals yeah. trainers are waving. They're already uh, calling for a, uh, for a card or something. Card. Yeah, that's not good news. When Bills defensive back DeMar Hamlin went into cardiac arrest on Monday Night Football, the key to his survival was the immediate care he received from medical professionals on the field. An automatic external defibrillator restored DeMar Hamlin's heartbeat. But on fields all over the country, that same level of care is not being provided to youth athletes. I have a young man that is on the ground um, having trouble breathing. You assume as a parent that your kids are in good hands and will be given up every opportunity to stay safe. Things can go very wrong. What's that supposed to be, Matthew? An elbow. This is 16-year-old Matthew Mangine Jr. He, he was probably one of the most personable kids that you could ever meet. He was a promising student athlete at St. Henry District High School in Erlanger, Kentucky. She's sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, did lead by example. He could have had a choice to go to any small college and play soccer. June 16th, 2020. Matthew was at soccer practice running sprints. His mom, Kim, was watching from a nearby parking lot, waiting to drive him home. It was 7.12 p.m. I remember seeing Matthew drop to the ground. And that's when I noticed a couple of the kids around him start motioning to the coach. So I ran out there and I, I've never seen him like that. I had just started watering the, the plants in the front yard and that was when I got the phone call. You know, Kim's in full panic mode. And I said, I'm on, I'm on my way. Unbeknownst to teammates and staff, Matthew had gone into cardiac arrest. His coach, Steve Hahn, was 10 feet away. Being counted down one. Yes, um, I would need uh, assistance in, at St. Henry High, District High School. Okay, what's going on? Um, I have a young man that is on the ground um, having trouble breathing. His eyes are a little bit rolled back. Dr. Stephen Knoll was in the parking lot waiting to pick up his son after practice. I saw that someone was on the field. Then I saw, I think, Coach Hahn turn around and look to his left, and he looked alarmed and at that point I said I think I better go check and see what's going on. Dr. Knoll reached Matthew and started administering CPR. It was roughly five minutes since Matthew collapsed. His color looked grayish. You know he had not been breathing. I didn't know what to do and that is the worst feeling as a parent to not know how to help your child. Did you ever find a pulse prior to EMS arriving? No. The, the ambulance just arrived. Sir, okay, I'm gonna let you go. We're, we're getting, all right, thanks. Paramedics got to Matthew at 7.23 p.m., 11 minutes after he collapsed. So, uh, so they're working with him for the machine to keep him his pulse going, okay? So they're hooking everything up to him right now. EMS continued CPR, started a breathing tube, and administered an AED, or automated external defibrillator, on Matthew, hoping to restart his heart. There's a curve. We got to jump the curve. Ready? After nine minutes, they transported him to St. Elizabeth Florence Hospital. The physician that was right in front of me kind of stopped and turned and, and said, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that your son has passed away.
I knew the next conversation that I was going to have with Kim was going to be the hardest conversation I ever had to have in my life. It was, it was unthinkable. It was unthinkable. And I didn't want to believe him. But I just kept saying no. <laughs> When my father walked into the hospital and the first thing he asked me was, is where was the AED? And I told my dad Matthew had passed away and he walked in and looked me straight in the eye and said, where was the AED? That was the first time I even thought about it. Matthew Mangine Sr.'s father, Bob Mangine, is the director of sports medicine for the University of Cincinnati and head athletic trainer for the men's basketball team. In our conversations, I asked and talked to Matt about had they applied uh, an AED or when did it finally get on. If you don't have it with you, you've, you've got to find that really quick. AEDs are a life-saving device to shock the heart that goes into an abnormal rhythm or temporarily stops and gets it to beat back into normal rhythm. As more questions about the care Matthew received came up, the man Jeans hired an attorney. Well, we took depositions, and what we discovered uh, was very disturbing. What the man Jeans learned was that when Matthew collapsed, head coach Steve Hahn and parent volunteer Mark Litzler were nearby while athletic trainer Michael Bowling was on the other side of the school, around 350 yards away at the girls' soccer practice. After I checked for responses, <clears throat> I asked Mr. Litzler to go get Mr. Bowling, or Mike, mm -hmm. and I began, I called 911. When you were told um, by Mr. Litzler, um, did you immediately leave for the practice field? Yes, sir. Did you take your AED with you to um, see what was going on? When I got to the top of the hill, sir? Yeah. No, I did not. When you sent Mr. Litzler, did you expect that bowling would come with an AED? Uh, yes, as a, as a trainer. According to Kentucky state law and the High School Athletic Association, schools are required to have an emergency action plan, or EAP. That plan must include the locations of all available automated external defibrillators, or AEDs. It's critical from our standpoint that we look at the timing of AED application. And part of our emergency action plan is to primarily know where those AEDs are and the easiest to access. State law dictates that emergency action plans also assign responsibilities in case of an incident and must be distributed, reviewed, and rehearsed annually. One week before Matthew collapsed, St. Henry athletic trainer Michael Bowling did send an EAP to acting athletic director Maureen Kaiser, but it was incomplete, failing to list all of the available AEDs. In addition, plan was never officially acknowledged nor implemented. When you received the EAPs on June 7th, what did you do with them? Glanced over them. Coach Hahn testified that no one gave him a 2020 EAP. Whose responsibility was it to give him the 2020 EAP before June 16th, 2020? It's between the uh, athletic director and the trainer. Do you believe it's Maureen Kaiser's responsibility to provide the coaches with uh, the EAP before the June 16th, 2020 conditioning session? All I can say is I put them together. I send them to the athletic director. I, I know all that. And they should, in turn, send these out. Okay, is he responsive? Not. Okay, how old is he? He is. He's three. Um, 
Uh, is he breathing? Um, Sorry. Is he breathing? Um, we we need uh, immediate assistance. We do have a gentleman here checking the pulse right at this moment. Okay. Can I speak to somebody else? My first reaction when listening to the call harkens back to why we, you rehearse, why you delineate who is going to do what in an emergency. Are you doing CPR? Sir? Hello? Are Sir? The school had five AEDs on campus property that day. The closest was about 50 yards away from where Matthew collapsed. But according to depositions, neither coach Steve Hahn nor athletic trainer Michael Bowling knew that AED was there. If you use these devices within the first three minutes, the chances are 89.6 to 90% survival. So that's why you have them. That's why St. Henry's had them. The Mangene's legal team timed how long it would take to retrieve the AED in the Fine Arts Building and get back to where Matthew collapsed. It took 47 seconds. How long have you been, out, been on the floor for about? I, I would say 10 minutes now. Between the time Matthew went down and the time the ambulance service came, who had the responsibility, Mr. Bowling, to get an AED to Matthew? Well, the document's what it is. Steve Hahn's in charge. So does that mean that Steve Hahn had the responsibility to get an AED to Matthew? It would. You can answer. It would have been his responsibility to have someone go get one. I'll say that. Local sheriff body cams show Matthew did not get an AED administered until 7.24 p.m. after paramedics arrived, 12 minutes after he collapsed. Why are these stories important? Because kids keep dying and they don't need to. Investigative reporter Stephanie Kizidim covered Matthew's story extensively for WKRC-TV, a local news station. Matt died because a law that was created is more of a guidance. There's no accountability to it. Who's it saving? Who's it protecting? What's it for? What's it really doing? And it's not just in Kentucky. According to the American Association of Pediatrics, sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death in youth and high school aged athletes in the US. One high school student dies from it every three days. Other two, and then we should be good from there. Um, In November of 2020, five months after Matthew died, the Mangines filed a wrongful death and negligence lawsuit against St. Henry and the Diocese of Covington. The Catholic institution that governs St. Henry and many other private schools in the region. Has the diocese reached a conclusion as to whether any violations occurred of KHSAA policy on June 16, 2020? Objection. You can answer. Uh, No, we haven't. uh, No, because as I said, stated before, there was no investigation. We've been in. Well, did somebody at St. Henry investigate to determine whether violations of the KHSAA took place. That would be, again, the principal is the person who's responsible for being in compliance with KHSAA, so I don't know because I'm not the principal. You don't know? Well, it would be the principal's responsibility to decide if they were in violation and report that to KHSAA. And have you asked if that has happened as the superintendent? No, I have not. Has St. Henry changed any policies regarding EAPs, AEDs, or anything else as a result of what happened to Matthew on June 16, 2020? Objection. You can answer. No.
based on my reporting, there's a broken system in Kentucky and nationally. And it's called sudden death in athletes. They're collapsing. 11 of them collapsed between, I think, June and August of last year. We know that this is happening. We're not doing anything about it. That's a broken system. The man Jean's wrongful death suit was settled in January. Details were not made public. Now, almost three years since the death of their son, the man Jean's are looking forward. Thank you. So I'm gonna take the um, stress. Board. My goal is, is to try and touch as many parents and athletes and anybody and coaches so that they're all prepared for those situations. That way I can channel my grief, my sorrow, my anger towards something positive. And that's kind of how we started our foundation. That's really what the foundation's about. Yeah, we give away AEDs. We help schools with funds. That's the small part. The big part is the education. If you haven't, please go to the website. Um, you know, one shot to save a life. That was my tagline I came up with, and that was my tagline I had with Matthew. I always told him, you only have one shot at life, so, so don't F it up. The Matthew Manjean Jr. One Shot Foundation raises money for AEDs to schools in need and educates staff, coaches, and students about life-saving measures, including how to perform CPR and how to use an AED. There you go, now push down. There you go, push. So it's trying to touch the floor. It's not fair that it had to be him uh, to set the example. But I always let him know that his, his legacy lives on and that he's helping other people every day. Hi, I'm Matthew Manchie and I accepted the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. This is Matthew opening his present in his Superman outfit. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. If protocol had been followed, do you believe he would be with us today? I do. I do believe he would be here today. 100%.